Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to become a backend developer in 2021. This is coming from my own personal experience as someone who is a self-taught developer. I mainly started in the front end to begin with and then transitioned into backend. My first job was in backend and I'm really excited to be sharing with you today some different tips and advice that I have for anyone who is looking to become a backend developer. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. And as always, shout out to some of my main, my favorite subscribers. Well, you're all my favorite subscribers, but thank you for your awesome questions, comments. Uh, as you know, I make all my videos based on what you want to see. So if you haven't already, make sure to leave in the comments down below other video topics you want me to cover. Okay, let's get started. Before we really get into how to become a backend developer, I want to go over exactly what is a backend developer, what do they do on a day to day, what is required, so you can really have a full understanding of what you will be doing before you dive in. Some daily responsibilities of a backend developer include developing and managing APIs, writing code, testing and developing solutions for code related issues, more like maintenance, organization of system logic, providing solutions to system problems, development of site architecture using proper methodologies such as Agile, developing systems for websites to accept and securely store data, uh, for example, a payment processing system. So you can see there is a lot that goes into being a backend developer and on top of what I delisted, there is so much more. It can vary role to role or job to job, but those essentially are what you will be required to do. You can think of a backend developer as someone who really holds the components, like a, a, the glue for the components, meaning when a user goes to a website, yes, the front end is what they interact with, but that wouldn't even be possible to save the data, store the data, or pass it without the backend. When you think backend development, you can think of it as the person who deals with the server side of things, such as processing the client requests and fetching the data from the database. Okay, first off, let's talk about some programming languages that you can use on the backend. Some programming languages include PHP, Java, Python, Perl, Ruby, and Node.js. Now, don't worry, you don't have to learn them all. Pick one of these and kind of go down that path. For myself, I picked Node.js specifically because I was already working in JavaScript on the front end side of things. But if you're able to choose any, kind of choose one that is very popular or in demand in your area. A really popular backend uh, programming language is Java, so if that's of interest to you, I would definitely suggest that as well. Okay, let's dive in a little bit more into the different programming languages that you can use on the backend, starting with Java. Java is a general purpose programming language for application development. It's primarily intended for backend development. Java is an incredibly useful skill for backend developers. It's a high performance language that supports object oriented programming. Next on our list, let's talk a little bit about PHP. According to some statistics, over 20 million websites and applications have been developed in PHP. PHP is one of those languages that has been around for a while and is still really in demand, especially because so many systems were built with PHP that people are always, or people or companies are always looking for PHP developers. Okay, so once you've picked out your programming language and you start going down that path, learning the programming languages and becoming pretty proficient in at least one, what's next? The next step is to learn Git. Git is a modern version control system and it's used really across the board and it's one of those things that just as important it is to learn the programming language, learning Git next is equally as important. Git is a software for tracking changes in any set of files, usually used for coordinating work among programmers, collaborating, and developing source code during software development. And when I say Git, I'm sure one thing comes to mind, which is GitHub. There are tons of other um, programs out there, but GitHub is essentially, I would say, the most popular. It is a code hosting platform for version control and collaboration. So essentially, it lets you work with others and collaborate with others by being able to pull their code, push yours, um, see the latest changes on the main branch, etc. That requires a whole other video, but the next step, once you have done your first part of learning your programming language, the next step is definitely to learn Git. Okay, so now that we have a programming language down, we also have learned how to use Git, what comes next? 
The third thing that you must master or really have knowledge of to become a backend developer is a database. This could be relational or non-relational databases. Let's go through the difference of each. A relational database is a type of database that stores and provides access to data points that are related to one another. In a relational database, each row in the table is a record with a unique ID called the key. Okay, but what exactly does that mean? Let's go over it with an example. Say we were looking to sort data regarding what weather is at a certain time of the day during a certain day. This is how it would be structured. The table itself would be weather, columns would be days of the week, the rows would be time of day, and the data points would be degrees Fahrenheit. Some popular SQL databases include Oracle, MySQL, and Postgres. There's a lot more, but those are the ones that come to my mind. Okay, now let's talk about non-relational databases. A NoSQL database is less structured in format, allowing for more flexibility and adaptability. I would say that nowadays both are still widely used and it really depends on what project or what company you're working for. From my personal experience, I have worked way more with non-relational databases than uh, relational. Um, Actually, I shouldn't say that. I would say it's 50-50, but I definitely enjoy working more with non-relational, especially because of the flexibility it provides. An example of a company that uses a non-relational database would be Facebook. And this is because the data that they need to store and provide, it's not as, it can't be as structured or as straightforward that you could put it into a relational database. For the data that they are providing, it needs to go in a non-relational database. With tons of unstructured information, you would turn to a non-relational database. Okay, let's go through a little example of a non-relational database next. Think of it as the information being stored is kind of on one large Word document. Everything is there. As more information gets entered, the document gets longer and longer. But if you want to find or pull data, you have an essence to search for that data itself. Some popular non-relational databases include Amazon DynamoDB, uh, MongoDB, Google Cloud Firestore, and okay, there's so many more. Okay, so what really is the difference though still? Like, I don't understand. One is just put into a Word doc in essence, and the other is more structured into a table format. Why does it really matter? Well, let me go through a little bit of the pros of each, and then you can decide. But essentially, the company you work for will decide for you. And when you are learning one on your own, I would say either way is fine to go, um, depending on really what you, you're most curious in. I would say start doing some research in both and kind of go from there. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you one is better than the other because both are used so widely and it really depends on the company you go to work for. So, and if you see, if they see on your resume that you don't have experience in uh, relational databases, but you have experience or education in non-relational, they're not going to not hire you based on that. You can pick up, uh, they're very transferable, the skill sets, and you can pick up one if you've learned uh, the other. Some pros though of a relational database is data is easily structured into categories, your data is consistent in input and easy to navigate, and relationships can be easily defined between data points. Some pros of a non-relational database, data is not confined to a structured group, you can perform functions that allow for greater flexibility, and your data and analysis can be more dynamic and allow for more variant inputs. Okay, I know that's a lot of information, and if you're sitting there going, what did you just say? I promise you I was the same way, and all you need to do at the end of the day is just dive in. I'm trying to make it as simple and friendly for you as possible, but I can't encourage you enough that once you've watched this video, depending on if you already have your programming languages, you've learned Git, just dive into a database, take a tutorial, and just kind of start learning. There's no secret formula to this. You just really need to start learning. And as you continue uh, learning these databases, you'll really have a better understanding as to what one is and what the other is. Okay, so let's talk about salaries for a backend developer. I'm going to do these salaries based on levels.fyi. I find them to be very reliable, uh, have really great salary accuracy. So I'm gonna search right now and you can go on your computer to levels.fyi. Backend developer, let's see together. By location, you have to do by location. I'm going to do um, let's do San Fran because everyone loves San Fran. 
For backend developer at Apple, we have 360,000 US dollars. These are all annually, by the way. Uh, Amazon is 600,000. That is extremely high. Oh, it's years at company of nine. That would be why. Um, Globant is 214. Let's see what else we have. Um, Rescale is 190,000. So as you can see, the salaries for a backend developer are really, and that was total compensation I might add too. So base, stock, and bonus. But um, as you can see, they are, the compensation for backend developers are really well paid. Um, and that's because their job is tough. There's a lot of complexity that goes into it constantly changing you're constantly monitoring different systems and uh, you're constantly learning so being a back-end developer for me anyways i think is really exciting because you're constantly learning new things building new things and solving a lot of problems okay so that's a little bit of insight as to what goes on to being a back-end developer there is still so much more that i'm not covering that if you want to see a part two please let me know down in the comments um, at the end of the day it's one of those things that I'm trying to keep it simple and to the point for you, but there, you know, you could keep on going on into what backend developers do, but if you are someone who is wanting to become a backend developer, I would say start with the things that I just listed. Pick up a programming language, a backend programming language. Once you have that, learn Git, learn all the commands, the basics, and the third thing being learn a database. Yes, there is more to it than that from creating different APIs, um, so much more I could keep on going on, but I think those are the three main things that you could start with or should start with when becoming a backend developer. I also want to note that you don't need to learn everything and shouldn't learn everything before applying for jobs. Then you will never apply for a job because you will always be learning. So once you have these three things really under your belt, I would say start applying for jobs. The rest will come to you as you keep on learning. Thank you all for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, leave in the comments other videos you want to see. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. And I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.